Hey everyone, Richard here. And in this video today, I wanna to share with you what are some of the most profitable property investment strategies that you can deploy into the market today based on current economic situation, based on increased energy prices and based on increased mortgage interest rates as well. So I wanna share with you what, you know, typically what property strategies that myself and my clients are using in today's market and how that's working for us. But I'm just gonna highlight now the key strategies that I feel like right now give you a, a great yield and therefore help you to offset that increased spike in mortgage interest rates and they are HMOs, service accommodation and title splits. Today in this video in particular though, I just want to focus on the HMO property strategy. It's something that I've been deploying for a number of years now in my portfolio successfully and I want to show you the effect that interest rates are having on a HMO property um, investment. However, I still want to show you that how profitable it can be even at the increased interest rates at five and six percent, even in some cases six and a half percent, right? It's still a very profitable property strategy and the main reason for that is because of the increased yield that you get by forcing the appreciation of an asset when you convert it from a residential property into an HMO converted property, right? So with that said and without further ado, if you don't know who I am and you're new to my channel, my name is Richard Norris. I've successfully grown a multi-million pound property portfolio and my group of property companies currently does around 200 to 250K a month. So with that being said and without further ado, let's jump in. But before I jump into the video and actually go over to the spreadsheet, I was just about to forget this part, the most important part. If you enjoy this video, please go and hit the like button. If you are new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't already, please like uh, ring that bell and make sure that you get notified when I release new content. Currently releasing two new YouTube videos twice per week. So with that said, and without further ado, let's actually go over to the spreadsheet right now, go through one of the systems that I use and my clients use in my flagship training program, Property Invest Accelerator. I'll show you how we use it. I'll show you how we can manipulate the figures, massage the numbers in today's current economic situation, and show you how we can still make uh, HMO deals very profitable in today's environment with that increase increased interest rates and increased costs associated with energy bills too. So I'll see you in the spreadsheet. Okay, hey everyone. So welcome to the spreadsheet. Um, let's run through the, the calculation for an HMO deal. I'm gonna put into a deal here that I did a few years ago right now, but I wanna show you the numbers on it like at three and a half percent, and I wanna show you the numbers on it at today. So I'm actually gonna retrospectively for this video, um, just so that you can see like the true effect that interest rates in the market and the true effect that um, increased energy prices have had on HMOs uh, investments and the profitability of them, but it's still going to show you how profitable that they are still as an investment and I'm still adding them to my portfolio today. So this is a specific three bed to five bed HMO conversion. The property in question that we're putting into the system here is based over in Stockport, right? And um, like I say, please don't get too hung up on all of the numbers and everything or where they're coming from. Like this, the purpose of this video is to show you the true numbers of what I bought the property for a few years ago, how much I spent on the refurb, and um, to show you that when the mortgage term comes to its end at three and a half percent, which is what I originally got the mortgage term for, at a fixed interest rate across five years. When the mortgage interest rate comes to an end and maybe I'm paying between five and 6%, I still wanna show you the numbers so that you can see how profitable it is. And this system is great because it's gonna be able to show you the true cause and effect of different market indicators and why I fundamentally believe that if you look at the numbers, why HMO is still a very profitable uh, property strategy right now to invest in as a commodity in the current economic situation and the recession that we're in. Okay. So with that said, then let's jump in. So the guide price for this property was 150,000. So I'm just going to put 150 in here. And then the next thing is, what did I purchase it for? Well, I purchased the property for 140,000 pounds. And like I say, I wanted to show you a deal here today that isn't like the number one deal, the best deal that I've ever done. And the reason I want to show you like just a standard average deal is because I don't want you to get carried away and think, well, um, how could I do a deal like that in today's market, right? So I really want to show you like the downside of a property deal and like just basically a standard deal with standard numbers, right? So 140,000 pounds is what I purchased it for. As soon as I click enter, you've got 25% deposit of 35,000 pounds. You have a mortgage at 75%, which is 105,000, right? Then you have like your legal fees. Um, I just put in here like 2,000 pounds, up to 2,000 pounds is what I'd expect to pay on a sp specific property deal like this. 
Then you have like your mortgage broker fees. Now, sometimes again, like your mortgage broker might not charge you. They might get paid solely by lender, but we, we allow 499 as a broker application fee. And then we allow 850 pounds in our calculations here for things such as valuation, specialist survey reports that we may need. Now, stamp duty, uh, based on the recent mini budget, you can see that uh, stamp duty is now zero to 250 at 2%. This is free. There's no surcharge on that, but you do have still have the additional stamp duty surcharge at 3% against the purchase price so 3% of 140 is your 4200 now the next thing we need to accommodate for um, is project hold cost so basically this is like okay this is a three bed property it needs a bit of TLC I'm gonna convert it um, and just so you understand it was a three bed property with two reception rooms I did a single story extension at the back by three by three and that was under permitted development right so no need to go to planning or anything I created the second room with an ensuite um, bedroom and then I basically made that communal space at the back under a single story extension, a big open plan kitchen lounge area, upstairs, three double bedrooms with one bathroom, right? So now I have to say, okay, well, whilst I'm refurbishing this property, what are the fees that are going out of the bank every single month whilst the property is going on? Now you can see like what I've done here is I've modeled the mortgage interest rates at 5%. Specifically when I bought this deal with interest rates for around three, three and a half, but I'm going to model it if I was buying it today so that we can make it relevant to today's market conditions at the point I'm trying to make that, hey, this is a great strategy. It's a very profitable strategy to run, even with interest rates at five, six, and even up to the 7% model. Uh, Mark, you'll still see that the cash flow is still very healthy. Just put myself over here so you can see these numbers here. So if the mortgage at 5% on 75% loan to value, so the mortgage I take out on day one is 105, at 5% interest rates, I'll be paying 437 pounds uh, a month, right? Gas, uh, which is my standing charges, we allow £20 for gas, £20 for water, £20 for electric, and I've allowed £150 here that um, I would be paying every month to Stockport Council for the council tax whilst the property is empty. Now, you can put this in as zero sometimes if you've got a property that is uninhabitable, uh, i.e. like you don't have any running water or you don't have a kitchen facility, then you can go and get empty homes relief. However, I'm going to, again, I always want to paint the worst case just so I'm covered I'm basically playing devil's advocate, managing that financial downside so that everything you guys can see is, hey, if this is my worst case, I can see like how this can be profitable for me too. So um, the total project cost therefore on a monthly basis of whole cost is £647.50. Now it took us four months to do this refurb. It was basically around 12 weeks to do the refurb. It was a 40k refurb at the time. If I was to do that refurb today, I'll probably be anywhere between 50 and 60 because of building materials. Again, I'm going to enter that in for you so you can see the effect that they would have but again everything's relative as well so remember um when I'm doing this example, I'm going to paint a picture of what it was previously, what it is now, so that you can see the true difference between the numbers, but you can still see the profitability of the deal and why I'm suggesting that HMOs is a good thing. And why I'm still investing in HMOs right now is because of the yield, forcing that yield above the 8% mark is still going to give you healthy cash flows at the 5, 7, and 10% interest rates, okay? Um, for your sensitivity analysis, which I highly recommend that you do when you're investing in today's market, right? So um, three months to do the refurb and I allowed four weeks for contingency to fill it to get five bedrooms full, okay? So that basically means 647 is my hold cost, times that by four months gives me 2,590 pounds that goes in there. There was no sourcing fee on this property, I found it myself, and it was a traditional property that was on the market at right move, and I just got 10K off the asking price. So again, it wasn't like a director vendor deal, it wasn't like an innovative marketing strategy, it wasn't where I built the pipeline and followed up and kept following up the deal where I could have got a big discount. This is a standard everyday deal that people are doing right now, and like I say, it's not the best deal I've ever done, but I'm putting it into the process so that you can see as an average deal without too much work, um, these are the types of deals and typical returns that you should expect to see investing in HMOs in today's market. And again, making that point and emphasis on why I think it's a great property strategy right now for people if you're starting out or if you're kind of an existing landlord and you're looking to scale your portfolio, HMOs right now with interest rate rises is still a profitable strategy and one I recommend. So the refurb cost was £40,000, so you can put that in here. Again, like I say, because I'm going to highlight here in like like light yellow, these are the things that make the difference, right? What you purchase the property for, okay? Um, the refurb cost, and then like what your interest rate is, all makes the difference to the outcome of the deal, right? But 40,000, I can manipulate this at the end, this is why the system's great. Planning permission, there was no planning permission, 
I did it under permitted development rights under single story three by three. As in today's market, you can do a three by four single story extension under PD rights, as long as it's not in an article four area. So furniture and white goods. So typically I allow, uh, you can see over here for my uh, furniture, I allow 800 pounds per bedroom. So we've worked out on average across the portfolio that we roughly spend around 800 pounds on average across the UK on furnishing an HMO property with a standard bronze HMO furniture pack. So we take 800 times by five, that's 4,000, plus the 1,200 for white goods, which is your washing machine and fridge freezer. We end up with 5,200 pounds that goes in here, okay? So that goes in here, so 5,200. HMO license is 750 for five years in Stockport. So therefore the total investment for this deal was 91,000, right? Now at the time when I got this revalued, it was 195,000, right? So this was six months later, I went back to the bank. I said, hey, I've, I've brought this property for three be uh, a three bed property. I've remodeled it into a five bed fully performing HMO. I've now got tenants in it, can you come and value it? Now I'm valuing this property on bricks and mortar. If I was to value this property as a performing asset under commercial valuation, it would get a lot higher valuation. The actual valuation of this property right now in my portfolio, because I had it revalued a few months ago, is 299950. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to give you what it exactly was at the time so that you can see, hey, if I did that deal in today's market at 5 and 6% interest rates, which is the point of this video to show you that, hey, it is still a very profitable strategy, then you can see what that looks like. So 195000 at 75% gives me a maximum lending of 146250 my equity 48750 which is the difference between the new market value and the, and the maximum mortgage I can take out. My money out, so this is equity, my money out is 41250 which is the new mortgage at 146250 pays back the original mortgage on day one of 105, gives me 41250 that I take out the deal. The money that I leave in the deal, therefore, is the difference between the 91,000 that I spent, the money that I took out, which was 41250, which means that the difference between these two figures is 49,840, which is what I leave in the deal. So 49,840 pounds is my money that I leave in the deal. Now, if we flow over to here, right, down in the right-hand corner, what we do is we start to put in the bedroom room rates within this system, right? So currently I get 95 pounds for a double a week and I get 110 pounds a week for a double on suite and I get 95 pounds uh, for a double so if you take the 95 pounds that I get for a double a double bedroom and I times that by 4.33 we end up with basically I'm, I'm just gonna round it to the nearest pound 411 pounds is what I get for that uh, a standard double bedroom and then for a for a two bed double bedroom with an ensuite I get 110 pound a week so 110 times by 4.33 110 times by 110 times by 4.33 gives me 476 pounds um, a month for that room. 411, 411, oops, 411 and 411, okay? So you can see that the rent that I get per month on this property is 2,120 pounds. Now, mortgage at 5%, okay? So if currently you can get a mortgage between about five and six and a half percent, depending on the lender, depending on the rate, depending whether you're going on a discount or tracker or variable, um, or whether you're going on a two-year fix, three-year fix, or five-year fix will depend. The, but roughly on a discount tracker right now, which is what I recommend is what we're using, you're roughly at around 5% and for a two-year discount rate. And then if you're looking at like a, a fixed rate, you're probably going to be around five and a half to six and a half percent. So we'll go at five now, 609 is the uh, mortgage that you'll pay. 12% management fees, and look, I've put in the monthly operating expenses, which is your gas, water, electric, and cancel tax, and your TV license and things, and some of the obligations that you have as a HMO landlord, like your PAP testing and your boiler service, um, your fire alarm checks, all of those sorts of things. 25% covers the increased utility costs. We used to run this at 20%, and we've now upped it to 25% because making an allowance for the increase in utility prices. But you can still see here, like the profit is still 726 pounds a month, which still gives you a 17% return. Okay, it might not be the 25% per se, if we're looking to get all of our money back out within the deal within four years, but 70% in today's market in a recession is still a very good return. And this is why I like it. Because if you look up here, you can see that the gross rental income is 25,440 pounds, right? Which is actually um, based upon, let me just double check what that one's based upon. 
Yeah, that's based upon your £2,120 of rental income times by 12 gives you your gross rental income per annum, which is against the house price of £195 gives you a yield of 13%. So one of the main reasons why you need to be adaptable to the market and why I recommend HMOs right now is because if you can get your yield above 8%, the higher the yield right now, the more you can force that appreciation up via basically like strategies such as HMO title splits, um, commercial to residential conversions or service accommodation or mixed use commercial, if you can force that yield up above eight, the higher that you get on the yield, the more you're going to be well protected um, from future interest rate rises if you're worried about that. So this is why it's a very safe but equally profitable strategy right now. Okay, so you're looking at 17% net profit free of taxes if you're investing correctly which means that the money left in the deal is just 49,000 you're making 726 pound a month if you had 49,000 in the bank 726 pounds a month in interest 17% a year free of taxes I still think it's a very profitable strategy right and that's why I'm suggesting it as one of my favorites right now in the current economic environment now um, if you look at here like what happens at six percent the great thing about these spreadsheets is we can start to say okay what happens based on different market variations what happens if interest rates go higher than five they go to six six and a half seven right what happens if we only have four rooms full three rooms full etc we can still see that balance in ratios and I'm going to show you that in a second but if we look at like the six percent you can see okay well the mortgage goes goes up from 609 a month to 731. Um, everything else stays the same. The management fee at 12, the monthly operating expenses, gas, water, electric, council tax, etc. is 25%. Still gives you a profit of 600 pound a month and 15% return. And again, that's still a very good return when you're, if you're getting 15 to 17% return as an average deal, right? This, I haven't worked hard for this deal. Like I'll be honest on this specific deal is an average deal from right move, average refurb, I didn't force the appreciation as much as I could have. I didn't go through planning. I didn't go and get a commercial valuation, which would have forced the appreciation and the yield higher. I didn't get an off-market deal via direct-to-vendor letters or any marketing campaigns or building a pipeline for six months and following up on offers. So I'm showing you like this is like the downside deals right now. And you're probably seeing right, right now like data speaks. That's why I can have so much conviction and confidence when I make these videos and tell you that, hey, HMOs right now are a very profitable property strategy and I invest in them because the downside my worst case is at five and six percent interest rates on average deals you're still making 600 to 750 net profit just on a five bed hmo okay um so that helps you understand how to do that now like i said like if we if we were to like recreate this if we go over to the hold and rent over here at three and a half percent because remember when i did this deal interest rates were actually at three and a half percent right so if i basically do the um 195,000 times by 75%. Okay, so the mortgage is 146,250. My rent's 2,120, but I'm getting 3.5% on the mortgage interest rate and I'm not operating at 5 and 6. You can see that the actually, and I've only got 20% MOE for utilities, not the 25% because of the increased bills. You can see you're making a thousand pound and 24%. So, okay, you can see the true deficit between a thousand pound versus, say, 726 pounds so you're basically missing like 250 to 300 pounds of net cash flow a month which is a substantial amount but again like if we look at the situation we're in if we take the economic uh, activity at the moment you're in a recession everything's like doom and gloom per se then what is the best case scenario in doom and gloom well if I can get 17% tax-free money I'm still making 720 pounds a month of net profit from my investments and I've got capital appreciation on top which I haven't talked about just yet then this is still a very profitable investment giving in today's markets right and you have to think about that it's about being adaptable as an entrepreneur not fixed and rigid not sitting in fear not being paralyzed because nothing's going to change a situation will just get worse so this is what really helps me to drive my decision making process is making all of my decisions based on data backed information on numbers because uh, the numbers really tell you like the truth like you can't argue with numbers and facts right data tells you everything that you need to know and this is what stops me from getting stressed anxious about the future and kind of helps me to stay calm when there's so much noise going on in the market right now with the fear of interest rates rising and all these things that we have to contend with with a global recession right so this helps you to understand like this this specific uh, analysis and how we use that and then like over here you can see like the actual total return on investment is 26 percent this is on five and six percent interest rates at five and six percent interest rates if i just assume that this property goes up by three percent a year 
Now this property has been in my portfolio for five years. The current value of this property is actually 299,950. So when I put that in a second, you're gonna see that the ROI is wild. I take all of my money back out. I've made a huge and significant profit because I've bought property and waited. I didn't wait to buy property, right? So um, capital growth at 3%. If I just assume a 3% cap growth rate, and the current property is worth 195,000, and the capital growth amount is 5,850 pounds a year. How did I get to that? I took the 195, I times it by 3% of capital growth, I get 5,850 pounds a year. On my net cash flow, I'm getting 7,252 pounds and 20 pence a year, which is based on my net cash flow, okay, which is based on my net cash flow a month times by 12 at the 6% um, interest rate, I believe that is, yes, 6% interest rate, and I'm getting the total capital return, therefore, is my net cash flow plus my capital growth gives me 13,000 a year return on an investment of 49,000. 49,840 pounds in my property, in the bank, is making me 13,000 a year of a combination of cash flow and capital growth. I'm at 26% on my total return. Assuming zero capital growth, because we can't account for that, let's say we don't assume any capital growth, despite that every data that you look at right now will tell you the average property prices that go up across the UK right now go up at a mean average of 7.5% a year. That's what the data tells us. If we ignore that data and say, hey, let's just pay like devil's advocate, let's be really pessimistic, let's put the financial worst case downside, let's cover that off, assuming nothing, we're still making 15 to 17% net return on our investment every year tax-free. Like this is a, a commodity that I definitely would encourage you to invest in. It's what I'm doing is why I'm sharing with you because I want you to thrive through the recession. I don't want you to be one of these people that's feared, that's plagued by um, the media painting the picture that things are worse than they actually are, to be honest, and um, overemphasizing, causing you not to take action because you're too fearful. When you have knowledge and you have um, expertise around you, then you gain confidence. And confidence and conviction is everything that you need right now. You don't need to be making your decisions on hypothetical scenarios, on um, things that you can't touch, that you can't feel, that's out of your control. Property is a commodity that you can control. If you understand how to run the numbers, the analytics in property, using systems and metrics and data at the heart of your core decision-making process, like I am showing you on this video today, you will be very profitable. And when you think like this as an investor, and you think about this on 10-year, 20, 30-year compounding cycles, that's where you really start to build wealth. Property is not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's a delayed process on delayed gratification it's a long-term wealth uh, building strategy right and that's what I'm sharing with you here today I'm sharing you the real true numbers of what the market looks like right now on an HMO property that sits in my portfolio I'm showing you preparatory what it was at three and a half percent I'm showing you what it could be at five and six percent now and the numbers are still healthy even with increased um, energy bills increasing this MOE from 20 to 25 and increasing the interest rate from three and a half to five and six down here I mean even if you were to run this deal Right, if you run this deal at 7%, right, let's say that you run it at 7%, at 75% loan to value, you can still see that you're making 588 pounds and 14%. You've still got margin, you're still at your rent coverage above 145%. This is why I like HMOs, because you tick the lender's criteria of 145% debt coverage at 55 or 7.5%. And you're able to force the yield high enough that these increased interest rates, like we could run this up to 10. Let's just run this up to like 10%, just so that you can see. Like if I go to 0.1 at 10%, Providing that the property is full, I still make £222 of profit at 5%. I know investors that have two-bed terrace properties, three-bed terrace properties that are in London, for example, um, that have them in their own name. They don't make 5% return today at best case at best case at like two and a half percent interest rates. So this is why I'm saying that if you understand how to um, control your investments, you understand how to invest safely, and you understand how to make data-backed decisions that are logical and methodical, and you'll be able to thrive during economic uncertainty. So hopefully this helps you give you that confidence. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is like, what happens then if this goes up to like 299,950, right? If it goes up to 299,950, which is the current market value today, and I increase my debt to 75%, you can see that the margins get squeezed. So although I take out 119,000, which means I make a 28,872 pound profit, 
because I only put 91,000 in to start, the property's paid me 119 back, it doesn't owe me anything, it's gave me a profit, and I'm still cash flowing at 210 and 400. For me, this would be a bit tight. So what would I do in this situation? I would just reduce the loan to value to 50%. If I reduce the loan to value to 50%, I'm still making 18% return. I'm leaving 46 in. My equity is 150,000, building that bridging for economic downturn, um, which basically means that right now I have uh, a very strong position in the market. It's only at 50% loan to value. It's making me 18% at 5% interest rates at 7, 10 a month, or it's making me 15% at 585 profit at 6% interest rates. And I've still got 150K of equity in there. The loan to value is 50%. That means that my margin, my margin at the higher interest rates, like 7 and 10, have still well covered as well. So this is how I'm thinking about my investments. And again, the reason why this holds true is because you can see the yield dropped, even though the cap growth went up, the yield dropped from 13 to 8. Like I said, anything above 8%, you're going to be truly covered on your downside to allow for the increased interest rates in the market right now anything up to 10%. If you've got 8% yield plus, anything up to 10%, give or take, you're gonna be profitable at those margins. So again, at that scenario, I really think there's nothing to worry about because you've based all of your returns on the worst case financial downside. And that's how I like to make my investment decisions. So look, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, if you wanna get access to these systems, these systems are in my flagship training program, Property Investor Accelerator. We've just opened up a few spots and we have a few spots available if you want to work with myself and the team more closely to basically work um, to find out how to basically thrive in the economic uncertainty at the moment, how to thrive during the recession as opposed to stand still, and you want to take advantage of the market opportunities, then click the link below this video, It'll, which should basically be how to schedule a call. If you go below the, in this video in the description section, there's a link that will enable you to go to our online calendar where you can book in a call with one of my sales team and they can have a consultation with you to see if you're a fit for the program. You can find out more about the program and what we do and you can see if we're a fit for you too if there's a match made in heaven and you feel that we're a fit for you and we feel that you're a fit for us we'd love to work with you there's an opportunity to do that right now if you're somebody who wants to make money make the best advantage of the economic situation at the moment and you want to dig for gold when the masses are fearful i highly recommend that you do that i'm doing it right now my clients are doing it right now we're getting great results and i ultimately over the long term like a lot of people that become very wealthy usually make their money during a recession because they see things Things that other people don't see and it's insights like this that gives you the confidence so if you want to basically be one of those people then uh, feel free to click the link and again if you like this video please uh, hit the like button um, if you haven't already please make sure you subscribe and ring that bell button as well for the notifications so I'll catch you in the next one speak soon